Welcome to Mastering Your Financial Life, hosted by Judy Heft, the founder and CEO of Judith Heft & Associates, financial and lifestyle concierge. This year, she's celebrating 27 years in business. In every episode, Judy interviews professionals who help others successfully manage their financial lives. You can find this show on YouTube, LinkedIn, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and more. Judy is the author of two books, How to Be Smart, Successful, and Organized with Your Money for a Better Today and Tomorrow, and her latest book, Mastering Your Financial Life Cycles, How to Successfully Manage Money in Every Decade of Life. You can read chapters of her books and catch prior episodes of the show at www.judithheft.com. Now, here's the host of Mastering Your Financial Life, Judy Heft. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to episode 56 of Mastering Your Financial Life. I'm Judy Heft, financial and lifestyle concierge, working with high net worth individuals, helping with bookkeeping, bill pay, working with small businesses, and then our lifestyle division, which really does everything from A to Z. So today I'm really excited to be here with Sarah Jacobs. Sarah is a family law mediator and attorney at Jacobs Burger. She's a partner there and it's her own firm that they founded a few years ago. And it's a boutique family law firm. And Sarah is an experienced mediator, but she's also a great litigator if push comes to shove and she has to go to court for her clients. So she's got over 20 years of experience. You can't believe that when you look at her because she doesn't look much more than 20. Thank you. <laughs> it's true. And it's great to have you here, Sarah. So thank, thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for having me, Judy. I appreciate it. Oh, it's my pleasure. So, you know, there's so many hidden costs that are, you know, that go along with someone getting a divorce. And I think a lot of people tend to think, you know what, it's going to cost me half as much now. I'm just going to be paying for what I need for me. Wrong answer. It's a lot more expensive to, first of all, to live on your own. And second of all, especially if you have children and trying to figure out and wade through the mire of, you know, what's going to be happening. So there's lots of, you know, money pitfalls people make. And so how can they avoid them? So I think one of the most pertinent things that we try to discuss with our clients, especially when we're talking about the hidden cost of divorce, is looking at their budget and their lifestyle costs and looking at their budget and their lifestyle costs from when they were a marital enterprise and also what they can experience that they might not be immediately identifying on a moving forward basis. And talking about some of these from kind of like a micro example, we try to bring up to them, okay, if you had car insurance or homeowner's insurance and you had an umbrella policy that covered your house, your jewelry, your car, what happens when you have two separate policies? If you don't have a home anymore because you're renting on a moving forward basis, you might not have the discount from the umbrella policy. So your costs may go up from what it cost previously. Then again, just in that same concept, if you're renting, do you have renter's insurance, which is an added cost, which you didn't have when you had a house and a homeowner's policy and, you know, an umbrella coverage. We talked to them about streaming services. If the family enjoyed Netflix or, you know, Hulu or one of these streaming services as an entire unit, now you're duplicating that cost. Two households are having that, that expense. And so you have to add that as, as a line item expense. We try to talk to them about what the small items that may kind of like fall through the cracks are when you're thinking about what your budget could look like. Everybody's focusing on large costs, medical insurance. They're focusing on, you know, housing costs from a mortgage or rent standpoint. They're not necessarily focusing on the minutia. And I think that that's really where the costs start to add up and where people don't adequately budget for their lifestyle moving forward. And if they don't know what their lifestyle is going to cost moving forward, how can they readily assess whether they're financial settlement and a divorce, alimony, child support, equitable distribution will be enough, good enough, in the ballpark, any of these versions. 
That's such great information, Sarah. I know because we deal with a lot of uh, clients that are contemplating divorce or even recently divorced, and they are really surprised at how much more it's going to cost them because, you know, people forget about things like Netflix or Prime or Hulu or any of those little things that are, you know, $10, $15 a month, but it adds up. And then when you have to start paying that on your own, you, you know, it's not part of the family unit. It's a lot more. So, you know, there's a lot of people that are the non-moneyed spouse. And they don't have any clue. And I've been with, you know, different clients where they have no idea how to get access to their statements because they just never were involved in that. And they gave all their power over to the other spouse. Usually it's the woman, but sometimes we found that it's the man too. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the vision of responsibilities. You don't always do everything together. Sometimes one person pays the bills and the other person does, you know, takes care of the home. So it's a you know, so what should they do if they don't have access to the account information or the bank information? How do they handle that? So one of the things that we've talked to them about on a regular basis is obviously if they're in the middle of a divorce. And when I say in the middle of a divorce, I'm talking about within the court system, at least here in New Jersey, they have the ability to sort of subpoena some of these institutions and, and be able to get access to the records independently on their own. That can be also cost prohibitive. And we have to talk about the pro con analysis there and looking at it. But we do, we print out um, it in some states, it's called the net worth statement. In New Jersey, it's called the case information statement. And it really sort of goes through what a person's lifestyle cost would look like from a um, breakdown from the shelter expenses, transportation expenses, lifestyle expenses. And we try to start at least having them identify the things in their life that they know exist even if they don't know what the actual cost of those things are. So using Netflix, for example, do you have streaming services in the house? Yes. What do you watch on a regular basis? I watch Netflix. Great. We're going to go to Netflix. We're going to Google the cost of what Netflix looks like on a monthly basis. We're going to talk to you about what it could be in an independent lifestyle moving forward. And we'll use those expenses as a current placeholder. Um, it doesn't necessarily work for things like utility and insurance costs because those can be, you know, consumption based or specific. But we can give them a ballpark number to put as a placeholder. And then what we do is we try to look at the total income for the household based on the total income for the household and the money that we know that you might have in the bank or in your retirement accounts. Are these expenses reasonable to utilize in looking at the overall costs? We also demand the documents from the spouse who is the moneyed spouse. There is a requirement for them to turn it over in the type of discovery process that happens in the court system. But obviously that can be delayed and it takes some time. So we try to construct a budget for them that's rational and reasonable so that at least we're operating in the beginning stages of the conversation within a ballpark of financials as to how we can use the lifestyle that they had previously and also budget for the lifestyle that they should have moving forward. Well, that sounds like you really do a little bit of, uh, well, maybe a lot of forensic bookkeeping there, digging and, you know, trying to figure things out and helping people because there are a lot of people that just don't have any access. I love that you just take a look at their lifestyle and, you know, using that example, Netflix is a great example of figuring out are they using it and what's that going to cost in the future? Because those financial affidavits, statement of net worth are so detailed they want weekly numbers and it can be very daunting if you just don't know where to begin and they're lucky to have someone like you help them you know we do a lot of that work too getting clients ready before they get to their attorney because we're not attorneys but we can go in there and take a look at six months of spending and try to figure that all out for them so it's, that's it's actually so I mean, we recommend that a lot we recommend use of of other experts a because it's it's their specialty and b because it's cost effective when it comes to, you know, the type of council fees that they're spending to do this. But it's really it. The analysis that you're talking about is not only helpful for them to understand their budgeting costs and how things can be moving forward, but to really understand what they need, what they don't need, how they can reconstruct moving forward based on what's important to them, what their goals are, but also like is there money that we don't know about? If, if, if the household is bringing in $500,000 a year gross and, and there's not money in retirement accounts and not money in debt and not money in savings and their expenses don't justify that type of spending, where, where's the money? And should there be something else that we're looking for in the divorce process that perhaps might not have crossed somebody's mind? That's so true because if you don't, you don't know, you don't, 
<clears throat> excuse me, we don't know what we don't know. Correct. So, yeah, I was thinking of that too when you were talking earlier. I mean, there could be offshore accounts, there could be all different kinds of accounts that, <clears throat> excuse me, the money spouse isn't giving the non money spouse access to. Correct. So it's, or if there's a business, how does that work? If someone has a business, they keep it separate. The non money spouse is not an owner in that business and how do they get those records that could be exactly exactly it's 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 a good place to use as a as a check and balance for mm -hmm. what is present for equitable distribution what money is really available for support and if there's you know a disconnect between the party's lifestyles their asset and liabilities and the income that is at least you know noticeable or reportable you, you have a problem and you immediately need to identify that and you need to start looking in places that maybe you weren't looking before. Yeah, that's good that they have someone like you to, to uh, guide them in that direction, because I think, like I said, you don't know what you don't know. So it's hard to try to figure all that stuff out. For sure. Really, yeah. And, you know, especially if you're the non money person, you really don't know where to begin. Maybe you were just a stay at home mom, you know, or, you know, you're just busy doing other stuff and didn't pay attention. You figured, oh, let's just let that person, you know, pay all the bills. It's interesting. So, yeah. So let's take a little break here and we'll come back and uh, talk some more with Sarah. No problem. Hey there. I just want to tell you a little bit about my new book that just came out called Mastering Your Financial Life Cycles. And here it is. It's how to successfully manage your money in every decade of life. I co-authored this with my CFO, Liz Levy. And together we created this manual that's going to help you through every stage of life. We talk about having a baby. We talk about young adulthood, pre-retirement, what to do when you're at that age of retirement, if you're contemplating divorce, do you need an estate plan? We cover all of these, each subject in a different chapter. And I really think that you're going to find this so helpful because at the end of every chapter, we have checklists that you can look at and you can use and they can be a guide for you. So this is a wonderful manual that we've created. It's available on Amazon. You can also find it on our website at judithhep.com slash book. And we're here for you. If you need anything, reach out. I hope you enjoy the book. Here's another picture of it, just so you know what's going on. Here it is. And I'm really proud of it. It's my second book. And I'd love to have you uh, read it and give me your feedback. Judy Heft, judithheft.com, financial and lifestyle concierge, celebrating 26 years in business. And over the years, I've learned so much. And what I've been trying to do is impart a little bit of this knowledge to you so I can help all of you become as financially organized as I am. And we're back, we're back here with Sarah Jacobs. Sarah is a partner at uh, Jacobs Berger. She's a family lawyer, mediator and litigator. So Sarah, you know, so I think, what if someone's like, they're not really ready to take the plunge, but they're thinking about it and they want to get all their ducks in a row. Like what are some of the hidden costs that they need to think about and how do they prepare for them? You know, like how can you help someone? They come to you and they just want to have a consultation and maybe they're not ready. Maybe they want to wait till after the holidays or anniversary or birthday or all those reasons why we put off divorce I know <laughs> that for many years myself <laughs> until I finally, you know, took the plunge. So I understand that. So, you know, what are some of the, you know, how do you prepare for some of those hidden costs and how do you, where do you go from there? We usually ask them to do a fair amount of research, especially if the documentation is not readily available to them. So we talk, um, you know, a lot about what their goals are. Do they want to live in the same area that they were living in? Do they want to relocate to, you know, a smaller house? Uh, if they, if they had a home, is the home going to be sold? Do they want to live in the home? And we start trying to, get them to think about how those expenses work together. So if they want to sell the house, we talk to them about real estate closing costs. We have them speak to a real estate um, agent. We have them speak to a mortgage lender to understand what kind of situation they're in now. Can they qualify for a refinance? Would they be able to purchase something in the future? We have them look at rental in the area and, and we have them speak to kind of leasing agents to talk about what are the utility costs what are the homeowners association fees what are the costs you know are there parking fees or like we said before renters insurance we try to get them to figure out in a more like bite-sized way what their costs could look like and then we tell them that if they do have access to the documentation start printing it out start printing out your your um, credit card statements for the last 
you know, six months definitively, but at least a year. Look at your year end statements from last year and the categories of your spending and try to figure out how your money is being allocated. We ask them, you know, if if you're going to sell the house and you're not going to be able to buy a new one and you're going to move into an apartment and the apartment's going to be smaller than the house, do you have a storage cost? Start researching the storage costs around where you live, understanding how much, you know, what size storage unit you need, what's going to cost for moving companies. We try to give them an action plan so that they have some of this information before they, for lack of a better term, pull the trigger so that they really do their the details don't overwhelm them on the minutia when they're trying to think about the larger issues like custody and parenting time and what they can settle for in terms of the financials so that they're more solidly uh set in their their moving forward trajectory so that they can make rational reasonable decisions while they're kind of going through the emotional roller coaster that divorce inevitably is for anybody yeah it can be very emotional for people especially even if you're the partner that wants it it's still, it's like a death it really is and there's so much emotion tied to it and to have to deal with all the money issues it can be very overwhelming and daunting so it's great to have someone like you that can really Thank guide, you. put them in the right direction it sounds like you you know you, you i think that's really great the way you help them figure out what the cost can be and help them do a little you know forensic bookkeeping themselves to get there we, we and, and, you know, we've talked a lot, I think, today about the, the non-moneyed spouse and like the access and trying to acclimate them. A lot of times the moneyed spouse also doesn't understand the impact, right? We have to talk to them about tax implications of the ways that they're going to be moving forward. A lot of these, you know, high earners, as you well know from the, the work that you do, they're in a certain tax bracket and they're not necessarily going to be out of that tax bracket if they continue to earn the type of money that they're earning, but their costs are going to duplicate as well. They may not have certain deductions that they had when they were a marital unit. You know, um, I have one client right now who's a high wage earner and his his soon to be ex-wife was, as you said, like a stay at home mom. She had a business. The business, unfortunately, on paper was not profitable, but it provided them with a lot of tax discounts that kind of offset the high earnings that he had and, and sort of the tax implications there, he's not going to have the benefit of that anymore. He's going to be paying a lot more in taxes than he's been paid previously. And so what do we do from a tax planning perspective? How is he going to be able to afford that when he's also paying alimony, child support and having duplicate expenses for his lifestyle costs? So, you know, as much as we all talk about the non muddy spouse and their access to it and their, their education process, the money spouse has a pretty hard learning curve also because their lifestyle changes moving forward. Well, that's really good information. Yes, we don't think about the money spouse. And I think, you know, that's why a lot of people stay married, I think, because it's going to be so expensive. It's just easier to stay married and live in one home together. And, you know, not, uh, as you say, pull the trigger because it's just, you know, they can work it out maybe. I don't maybe. know. <laughs> Depends. Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe not. But yeah, it, it can be a bit daunting to think about how many how much more it's going to cost everybody, both parties included, even the, the high wage earner. So that's exactly. really helpful information. So, yeah. So, you know, this was really inf important information that we gave our, our listeners, and I'm sure that they learned a lot. How can they find you? Um, we're available at www.jacobsburger.com, or you can find us on Facebook at Jacobsburger LLC. Same thing on Instagram. We're and youtube as well same handle um we're kind of all over the place so if 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 you google us you will find us one way or another and i'm sure you're on linkedin too yes we are and of course you can always call our office if you want to talk to us 973-710-4366 that's great sarah and are you only admitted in new jersey um i am admitted in new york um i actually went to law school there practiced there first but in in fairness to our listeners we don't actually practice in New York, but we do have referral partners that we refer to on a regular basis who are more nuanced in New York and New Jersey, because even though they're similar, they're not identical. Right. I think every state is different in their laws anyway. For sure. Yes. And it's good to know. Oh, this is great, Sarah. Thank you so much for being a great guest. Thank you for having me and for sharing with our listeners as well, all of the opportunities that you have to provide them with services in advance of coming through our doors. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you for tuning in to Mastering Your Financial Life, hosted by Judy Heft. You can read chapters of her books and catch prior episodes of the show at www.judithheft.com. Thank you for your positive comments and sharing this show with others.